The Indian stock markets were shut on Monday, 22nd of January because of the Ram Mandir consecration ceremony in Ayodhya, making an all-time high of 22,124. However, the very next day, on the 17th of January, markets crashed with Nifty losing 460 points, 2.08% in a single day. This, if an account holder wants to update or modify his or her date of birth, then this document will no longer be valid for them. The retirement body has issued a circular regarding this. But what are the documents that are still valid? Hello and welcome to the Weekly Economic Insights, your weekly dose of events and news that you need to know to manage your personal finances. I'm Ridma Bhatnagar. Let's begin. Let's begin with all the action of the stock markets. The Indian stock markets were shut on Monday, 22nd of January because of the Ram Mandir consecration ceremony in Ayodhya. The markets were though open on Saturday, 20th January. The two stock exchanges conducted the special live trading session in the equity FNO segment on the 20th of January. The Reserve Bank of India also announced that no transactions and settlements will take place in the money markets on the 22nd of Chan. But if you look at the last week's highs, the Nifty 50 index crossed the 22,100 mark on the 16th of January, making an all-time high of 22,124. However, the very next day, on the 17th of January, markets crashed with Nifty losing 460 points, 2.08% in a single day. Sensex also touched an all-time high of 73,427 on the 16th of January. The market witnessed heavy selling by FIIFPIs this week. As per provisional data, they sold 24,169 rupees worth of securities in the last three days of the week. Let's now talk about some global market action. The Nasdaq Composite gained 2.25% this week and closed at 15,310. If you look at as far as the Dow Jones Industrial Average is concerned, it made an all-time high of 37,933 but settled at 37,863, which means it gained over 0.97% over the last week's close. Let's now talk about the FTSE. That fell by over 2.13% this week and closed at 7,461.93. The Hang Seng lost over 5.76% of its value this week and closed at 15,308. That was all as far as the market action is concerned. Let's now move on. The Ministry of Commerce and Industry released data this week for India's foreign trade for the month of December 2023. Now, the overall trade deficit registered a decline of $2.58 billion. If you look at the same data of last month, the statistics stood at $5.17 billion. But if you compare it on a year-on-year -year basis, it was $7.75 billion in December 2022. SEBI also released its monthly bulletin about the month gone by. Let's bring you some highlights. The turnover of the non-agricultural option contracts on the National Stock Exchange or the NSC shot up by more than 1,077% if you see it on a month-on-month -month basis. The SEBI said this could be attributed to increased turnover of option contracts of the WTI crude. It also showed that 41.8 lakh DMAT accounts were opened last month. This now takes the total number of DMAT accounts in the country to 13.93 gross. Now, the Niti Aayog also released a multi-dimensional poverty index. But what really is this report? This report is based on various national family health surveys. Now, as you would know that traditionally, poverty is calculated on the basis of household income or consumption expenditure. However, this approach of measuring poverty has been criticized for not capturing the multiple deprivations which may be faced by individuals in their lives. Now, the MPI or the Multidimensional Poverty Index becomes a solution for this. The MPI in India is calculated by taking into account 12 factors. It contains health, education, standard of living, maternal health and bank account among other factors. 
At the state level, Uttar Pradesh topped the list with 5.94 crore people escaping poverty. This was followed by Bihar at 3.77 crore and Madhya Pradesh at 2.30 crore. What was also encouraging was that 12 indicators of the MPI, all of them, showed remarkable improvement during this same period. Now let's talk about the payroll data that was released by the Employee State Insurance Corporation. Now essentially this data helps us understand how many new entrants came in India's workforce. This data says that 1.59 million new employees joined India's workforce in November 2023. But this figure is 7.5% less compared to 1.72 million employees that were added in October. In the same data, it also shows that around 317,000 women joined the workforce last month. Now let's talk about some regulatory changes and this is important for you. The EPFO has removed the Aadhaar card from the list of documents acceptable as one's date of birth proof. With this, if an account holder wants to update or modify his or her date of birth, then this document will no longer be valid for them. The retirement body has issued a circular regarding this. But what are the documents that are still valid? A birth certificate issued by the registrar, mark sheet issued by any recognized government board or university, school leaving certificate, school transfer certificate, and SSE certificate, among some others. Now let's talk about some IPOs and NFOs. IPOs first, Allied Blenders and Distillers Limited filed for their DRHP, which is a draft red hearing prospectus. This essentially helps potential investors to study the details of the IPO to try and gauge their interest before making the final decision. Now, the liquor company has filed a DRHP with SEBI dated 15th of January. The company aims to raise 15 million rupees, in which 10,000 million will be fresh issue and the rest will be offered for sale. Let's now talk about some new fund offers or NFOs. The Access Fixed Term Plan Series 120, 91 days. Now, this was launched on the 18th of January. The new fund offer falls under the income category and is categorized as a close-ended plan. This will be available till the 23rd of January. Now, the primary goal of this scheme is to deliver returns by investing in a diversified mix of debt and money market instruments. Let's talk about another one. The Bajaj Finserve Mutual Fund has also introduced two exchange-traded funds or ETFs and this was on the 15th of January. The new fund offers the Bajaj Finserve Nifty 50 ETF and the Bajaj Finserve Nifty Bank ETF both were open for subscription until the 18th of January. Now, while the Bajaj Finserve Nifty 50 ETF is an open-ended exchange-traded fund tracking the Nifty 50 index, the Bajaj Finserve Nifty Bank ETF is an open-ended exchange-traded fund tracking the Nifty Bank index. In some global events, the World Economic Forum was held in Davos. This was the 54th annual meeting under the theme of rebuilding trust. Let's bring you some big highlights. One of the biggest headlines came from what India's Information Technology Minister said. Ashwini Vaishnav told Reuters in an interview, he said, India is eyeing $100 billion in annual FDIs in the next few years. He also added that India sees 6 to 8% consistent growth rate over the next full decade. The other headline also came from the Reserve Bank of India where the RBI Governor Dr. Shakti Kanta Das told Bloomberg that as per projections, the headline inflation is going to be in the range 4.5%. He also made it clear that rate cuts are highly unlikely. From a global perspective, leaders from various countries and regions called for global solidarity and collaboration to address complex challenges such as the conflict in Gaza, the Russia-Ukraine war and the China-US relations. Artificial intelligence was also a hot topic. The potential and impact of artificial intelligence on various domains and sectors, as well as the need for balance between innovation and governance, was also discussed. Well, with that, it's a wrap from my side, but we will be back next week. Do not forget to share this video. One Finance will bring you every week the top news and updates that impact your personal finances. Do follow One Finance.
investment in securities market are subject to market risks. Read all the related documents carefully before investing.